Before I tell you what exactly situational judgment exam is, I want you to do one thing. I want you to imagine that you are a owner of a big, big dental office. In that dental office, you have 10 operatories. You have 10 rooms with 10 dental chairs and you have patients visiting to your office from all over the town. Now, one day you went to your office and found that the office is short staffed and there is only one dental assistant available there. So you ask your dental assistant to seat every patient there and let you know their chief complaint or chief concern and you are there on your own. So you are going to manage every patient individually, separately by going there in that room and talking to them. In room number one, you go and you find that a mother is there with her seven year old kid and he fell in a soccer match and avulsed his central incisor. She is concerned that if that tooth is put back or placed back in the socket, what are the complications she can expect in the future? So you are going to talk about that. You go to the next room and there is a patient who wants to get her amalgam filling replaced with the white filling. But before doing that, she wants to know what are the advantages and disadvantages of the filling or the restoration that we want to place in exchange for the amalgam restoration that we are going to take out. In the third room you go and there is a patient who wants to get a tooth extracted but is concerned that she is on blood thinners. She is ready to reschedule her appointment but she wants to know what measures she need to take before getting her tooth extracted. So this is what situational judgment is. You will be going from one room to another, taking care of all those patients who have concerns, who have, who are there for some chief concern, for some problem. And now you are going to deal with that. The only difference is that instead of patient, there will be an examiner. You might be verbally explaining to the examiner the procedure, the guidelines, or the recommendations along with the advice that you are providing them so that they can act on it that will be beneficial to them. Similarly, the exam is all about one day of owning that dental office and taking care of all those 10 patients that are in there to get treatment. So if you want to know more about the NDEC protocol or how the blueprint of this exam looks like and what changes or how those changes could affect you when we compare it to the protocol that was available in ACS and all those changes, how could they affect you? Then please keep watching this video or just click the link that is available up there that I have provided and uh, we can go ahead and talk about it further. I'm Rahul Monga and thanks for watching this video. I have been training participants of NDEB, INBDE, ADC, students of dental assisting and internationally trained dentists who want to practice in Canada, US, New Zealand and Australia. In this video, we will continue to talk about what those changes are in the NDEC protocol as compared to the ACS and whether it's something to stress about or whether it's a blessing in disguise. Thank you. The purpose of this video is to give you the necessary information and not to overwhelm with information that is not important. So we will just talk about the changes that happened in this new protocol and what those changes mean when it comes to the applicants or participants who will be particip participating in that very exam. If we talk 
talk about so many things that this is going to be happening or this task will be included then there is a plethora of information let's keep it simple and the simple thing is that you will be evaluated for every task that was evaluated or tested in assessment of clinical skills except the following i have highlighted these in reds and help you understand that these are the tasks that you will not be tested on class 3 composite preparation has been excluded and the reason in the ndecc or ndec protocol they have mentioned about why they have excluded it but let's not talk about that our focus is to concentrate on the things that matters to our exam and uh, our preparation full metal crown preparation has been excluded you won't be tested on this it could be the changing trend in dentistry as uh, most patients are now orienting towards having zirconia or ceramic based restorations and that could be one of the reason that uh, this task seems to lose interest among the examiners rubber dam this currently won't be tested but i have placed a question mark there because i have been following the dental protocol or the testing protocol for australian dental council and uh, i wondered a couple of years ago that there could be some change that could be occurring in the end up protocol for the clinical skills exam and that's what exactly it happened it's going towards what it was tested in australian equivalency for the internationally trained dentist and in those exams rubber dam was tested in the oski or the situational judgment that we talk about when it is relevant to the canadian challenging or canadian equivalency so currently it's not been tested but we don't know about the future so let's hope for the best but right now there is no independent scenario or uh, evaluation for your skills on rubber dam application that will be tested this is beautiful that no carious teeth will be used in testing participants how much time we have spent in our preparation for this exam that caused us frustration because of the unpredictability of the amount of caries that we used to find in those teeth so i believe that using uh, normal teeth that is not layered or not caries caries you will be able to achieve and deliver consistent results you will be able to define and uh, outline the exact dimensions more easily you won't be damaging the tooth unnecessarily by trying to scoop out caries when enamel gets fractured when the margins look so rough because of uh, the attempt that we make to remove the caries so i believe that is a blessing in disguise for people who will be appearing for these exams in the coming years provisional crown is seem to be or supposed to be fabricated on the pfm preparation the tooth that you have been prepared for a pfm crown and uh, i like this idea because if you are preparing or fabricating the provisional crown the very same day after you have prepared the tooth for pfm you now have a good chance of 
delivering your preparation with excellence with the results that you want to have in your preparation and that's because just by having that provisional crown made you can measure its dimensions that how much you have reduced if it breaks while removing the provisional crown you get an instant idea that there is a undercut in your preparation and that can be corrected right away isn't that wonderful so this is also i believe to be a blessing in disguise and i would say that that's only if it's uh, happening on the same day if something changes in the future and a part of the skills are, are being taken on the second day then still during your preparation for this exam you will get an idea that how your provisional crown is coming out depending on how you have prepared your tooth for the pfm crown you will get better oriented at that how much you want to reduce to get this thickness of the provisional crown when it comes to situational judgment it consists of 10 station oski or 10 operatories or 10 rooms considering that there are 10 different patients sitting in there now there will be an examiner who could be posing as a patient or they will just ask you to particip participate and say things or give recommendations or advice or take the medical history or provide the necessary information regarding a certain procedure provide advantages or disadvantages of a procedure or of a particular material that you are going to use so it could be anything you will be spending around 15 minutes per station in 10 different rooms you will be allowed some time to read the statement or read the questions or it could be that examiner could be verbally stating you something and uh, you might be given some time to process that information it could be displayed on a video so the source of that information could change but you will be allowed some time to process that information so that you can plan ahead what action you are going to take or how you are going to respond communication and rec record keeping is one big thing we know that in the past there was no such criteria of uh, evaluating the communication skills but in this situational judgment exam you might need to look into the eye of the examiner and uh, talk to the examiner just the way as you are going to talk to the patient the overall idea here is to convince the examiner who is posing as a patient to understand and take the action that you want them to take and that could happen only if you are affirmative if you are confident and if you help them understand the information that it is critical for them to understand that is critical for them to understand that it is vital for their dental health some people may ask that what is the best time to challenge this exam in a year uh, how much time do we need to prepare for this exam as this is relatively new or even in the future they might want to know that how much preparation time is needed before they could register for their exam the idea here is when you become confident that you are ready to be tested and there is only one thing i would say about this exam and it is here register for this exam when you become comfortable with the feeling of being judged the idea here is you will certainly definitely be 
uncomfortable when you will be looking into the eye of the examiner you won't it would be hard for you to think them as a patient initially but it is a practice that you would need to do during your preparation time do not focus on your own deficiencies on your own lack or do not doubt the content or preparation that you have done in the past for this exam rather concentrate on the fact that this examiner is a patient whom for whom you will be helping to get the desired needed service for their oral well being so if you focus on their well being that's when the confidence will come out since you will no longer be focusing on your own drawbacks or deficiencies so this is one critical thing that i want you to practice on that focus on the things that a patient can get from you since your main intention is to help them in that way you won't be nervous and you will give them the desired information that could be very beneficial to them